This champion, Eryx, is really freaking cool, especially in the build that we have in store for you guys today. First of all, she's got the smoke monster vibes. You guys know me, I have a thing for the TV show Lost and for the smoke monster, man. I mean, I think the aesthetic on this champion is so freaking BA. Like, I think she's one of the coolest looking champions, honestly, in the game. She's got the crown covering over her head. She's got the smoke a la Holst Ring. Man, who do you guys do think is the better smoke guy or gal in the game? Holst Ring or Eric's? Holst Ring's kind of cool because he doesn't look as cool to me, like, as a champion. But he has like the, the actual spirit, the ghost or whatever emanating from himself. <laughs> I digress. I've been getting so many requests because on that channel, I do the, the way I decide the next champion guide is I listen to the audience, right? I just go through the comments and I pick a random champion who there's available content in the game for, right? So usually it's a Doom Tower secret room or, you know, a particular boss or something like that. Anyway, so many requests for Eric's. Nate says, I love the content. I uh, would love to see an Eric's guide. She's a log and reward after two years, but I pulled her from Ancient Shark after 120 days i think she could help me in doom tower and spider the thing is guys is uh you can't pull her from sacred shards but you can pull her from ancient shards okay we have just doka says next champion guide eric's login champ that you get 30 days after 270 so 300 days in uh do a video on eric's i got 100k hp on mine and she will nuke harder than my ray because because says kitty wampus drums Man, a lot, those are just a few of the comments, guys. A lot of comments, uh, finally, I'm like, okay, who is this Eric's and what does she do and why haven't I heard of her? Obviously, I've heard of her, I have her, but I never really gave her that much of a glance. I'm like, all right, another underwhelming Gerda Bog Brew type champion, you know? So first of all, again, we touched on her aesthetics, but I love them, just side note, in case you didn't hear me the first 10 times. Loud and clear. Night Rev nice Revenant, nice Revenant, for those of you who don't know the lore kind of backstory of Raid, they're like uh, cultists, like cults, you know? And they're basically the baddest faction along with Demon Spawn in the game. They're mean to everybody. They don't get along with anybody and they just, you know, raise and, and kill and ravage. They're, they're very bad people and she fits that aesthetic to me. She has she's an HP based champion, magic affinity. She has deathly arts on her A1. This is an AOE attack on her A1. So starting out pretty strong here, 35% chance of removing a random buff from each target. Not a bad A1 at all. Now, I want to skip to the A3 because she has counterattack as well on herself. So on a three-turn cooldown, she has the big version of Ally Protect from a pretty tanky HP-based champion, right? And then she has counterattack for two turns on a three-turn cooldown, ergo a ton of more AoE attacks with removing one random buff on each target every single time she counterattacks. Check out her A2, guys. We have a uh, Thorn Chain Malaysian. Mal Malison? Malison? Malison. Mal Malaysian. Malison. Malison. Obviously, everybody knows what a Malison is. Come on, man. Duh, I'm not that big of an idiot, guys. Dax, all enemy, three turn cooldown, 75% chance at a stun debuff for one turn. Also, transfers a random buff from this champion to the target that receives a stun at, uh, from this skill. So we get a self cleanse, 75% stun, three turn cooldown. Now we're talking, and an AoE on the A1. I mean, that's a really interesting kit. Now, what's, what's more is, before we get to our passive, I wanna jump right to the multipliers, man, because I was like, whoa, whoa. She actually can put out some serious damage here. I wanna compare it to like Bivald of the Thorn because to me, he's a really good comparison. He has two strong AoE attacks. He's also an HP-based nuker as well. So check this out, guys. This is... Bivald of the Thorn, thanks to hellhades.com here, right? So he has on his first AoE attack, on his A2, it's a two-time hitter with a 0.15 multiplier. Sometimes, I was mentioning this the other day, sometimes HP multipliers, they're a little bit harder to kind of, I don't know, at least to me, I guess it's the decimal point, I don't know, <laughs> like, they're a little bit hard to assess. Okay, is that great or is that not great? Either way, guys, this is why we're doing the comparison. He's got 2.15, right? So you add it up, you get a 0.3. Uh, on the A3, on a four turn cooldown, we have a 0.25 HP, plus you get some extra damage uh, if they're under a debuff, right? So 5% extra damage. But, uh, you know, for the most part, 0.25. On Eric's, on her A1, which again is an AoE, now it's very comparable to Bivald's A3 ability, which is on a four turn cooldown, but this is just her A1. It's a 0.22 HP multiplier. It's a solid, you'll see in the video, 
but it's a solid damage dealing A1 ability for sure. On the A2, we're talking a 0.35 multiplier on the stun, the AoE attack with the stun. So she can, whoever it was in the comments earlier, who was it? This guy, Kitty Wampus Drums. I mean, they were right. She smacks, deals way more damage than I was expecting. I'll be, I'll be real with you guys. Passive, cynical. At first, I was cynical on this champion. Not anymore. Fills this champion's turn meter by 5% for each time an ally inflicts a critical hit. What? Fills this champion's turn meter by 5% each time an ally inflicts a critical hit? Dude, that's insane, man. There's no cooldown, right? It happens on each hit. So a champion like Bivolt, again, on this double hitter, it's filling her turn meter by 10% every time that's pretty crazy and then heals this champion by five percent of their max hp every time an enemy inflicts a critical hit again so on an enemy uh we heal on an ally we turn meter fill it's a really cool kit dude i slept on this champion so hard let me show you now how i have her built because now we're gonna get next level here we're gonna get next level on this champion sorry for the uh being a little bit hyperbolic here but it's eric's here she is guys you might be asking yourself right now what is that artifact set? There's something going on around here that just don't add up. What the heck is that? <laughs> Some of you may know, I haven't used it much, but I have her in, that's right, say it with me, a provoke set. Whoa. <laughs> so we have a, th a provoke set, which I barely ever use in this game. Very few champions that I run and provoke. But to me, it makes so much sense on her, right? She's already got the stun right on the a2 75 percent we can bump that to an 80 percent with fearsome presence we can also bump this to a 35 percent with fearsome presence that's very interesting very interesting here we have aoe's on the a1 aoe's on the a2 right so she could be a, a, a lockdown just s tier control champion in this game and provoke i thought to myself right uh and again we're stealing buffs we're cleansing on the a1 and the a2 respectively as well so i put her in provoke and keep in mind she does require accuracy anyway on her kit for the stun and for the uh, the buff removal and whatnot uh but provoke is not going to be it's not going to be based on accuracy right this will land regardless so a 30 percent chance to place a provoke debuff for one turn i have a perception on her as well i had her built it's funny i actually did a full guide on her for the other channel but i'm not going to upload it because i thought to myself dude this champion is too cool too special and she's free to pass up on the main channel here so i had her in relentless in that video but halfway through the video i was like you know what i think she'd be pretty cool and provoked too and i decided to try her out and i was like wow like you can't get more locked down in terms of control for progression and dungeons and doom tower than than eric's in a provoke set i mean it's really crazy right could also run her in stun set and get your extra chance of stun on the a1 as well but she already has stun the a2 it, also i kind of like the, the idea of provoke on this champion plus all those counter attacks as well but again you can make the same case for stun just we have a higher chance at landing it here on provoke anyway guys uh let me go through the artifacts so <laughs> the crazy thing is i only own like eight provoke artifacts so they happen to be pretty good because usually, I, I mean, you're probably the same way as I do. My, my my barrier of entry, if you will, my threshold for what I will keep on crappy artifact sets, it goes way up on artifact sets that I never use. So all the artifacts that I did have lying around was actually were actually really good. So I have HP on the banner. You can go accuracy on the banner as well. I have crit damage for a little bit of damage on the amulet. I have HP on the ring. I have speed on the boots. I have HP percentage on the chest. We have crit rate on the gauntlets. Uh, we have, uh, again, looking for accuracy, looking for speed, looking at, we have a quad roll crit rate on this uh, helmet here. Had to take this off Turvold. Sorry, Turvold. You ate my sandwich? I, it was a simple mistake. It could happen to anyone. Oh, uh, really? We don't have her glyphed up just yet, so we could definitely min-max her quite a bit more. No ascension on any of this stuff, except for one star on the chest here. So, uh, but that's how I have her built. The crazy thing about this champion, guys, is, you know, I'll talk, I'll show you, that. let's do the masteries together, then I'll talk about the crazy thing on this champion as I do the masteries, right? So, I decided to reset the masteries and we can do them together, because just talking about how special this champion is, right? So, we have a big decision to make when building this champion. Do it because she's a great damage dealer, man. She is a great damage. Dealer. She out damages all my other HP based nukers. We're talking Magnar. We're talking Husk. I'm gonna run her in dungeon with all of them, right? Uh, she out damages, out damages them significantly when she has War Master on. I haven't tried her without War Master yet, so I'm rebuilding her. So we have a big decision. 
it really makes a lot of sense to go offense, to go defense, and to go to support on this champion because we could use the extra accuracy. Uh, we could come down, pick up lasting gifts, have a chance to extend the duration of the counterattack, extend the duration of the ally protect as well. Uh, so there's a lot of things we can kind of do with this champion. Uh, but I decided to forego the support tree initially and go offense and defense, come down, pick up retribution because we wanted to counterattack with all those, uh, you know, AOE on the A1s with the, remo the buff removal on top of that right uh but i think i'm gonna sacrifice offense i'm gonna sacrifice all that damage i still want to see what she can put out here we have her over 100 crit rate but i think i want to go defense and support instead for a few reasons let's go through them right now so we're gonna pick up delay death we're also gonna pick up harvest despair right so she has of course a 60 percent chance of placing a leech when placing a stun which is great. I wish it worked with Provoke as well, right? I wish it, I mean, it has everything except for Provoke almost, right? Either way though, she has a 75% stun. So now she's just gonna be adding even more to the table. She's gonna be placing those leeches all the time as well. So Harvest Despair is gonna be a go-to mandatory 100%. Uh, and then we want Retribution. We really want those counterattacks, right? So Retribution, no brainer. I'm gonna go with Fearsome Presence. Now I wanna be clear here. Personally, I would not go Fearsome Presence for an extra 5% chance if it was just for the stun. So if I was running her in Relentless as I was before, Perception, you know, however you want to build this champion, whatever you want to put her in, so many different artifact sets. Heck, you can even go Guardian gear to have even more ally support on this champion. There's so many different ways to build her. It's just crazy because she's HP based. Heck, you could go Bulwark. You can go Bulwark. You can use her on a go second team in the arena. You can put her in a, in a stun set, kind of like Mighty Uko for the arena and then go down, pick up Fearsome Presence as well, and she'll be super annoying, right? So there's a lot of different ways to utilize this champion. I'm just showing you one of them. I'm trying to talk through all of them. Sorry for the long kind of rambling here on the on the setup in this champion, but I think she's really cool. Uh, definitely more than meets the eye, at least at initial glance. We could also go Selfless Defender. So like, if I was gonna use her on a go second team in the arena, I would go Selfless Defender, I would probably go stun set with Fearsome Presence on this champion in the arena, right? Uh, but of course, you could go Bulwark and you could go with Selfless Defender as well and just make her like an absolute absorption machine, right? Uh, so there's a lot of options. On the support side, we are actually going to go, even though she's an HP-based champion, we could use the HP. You know what? I take it back. I am going to go with the accuracy. I am going to go with the accuracy. Uh, just because... There's a case to be made just going HP and just coming down here, pick up uh, pick up Exalt and Death, and then come down and, you know, still grab Swarm Smiter. But I wanted the extra accuracy because she was kind of borderline around 300 for me in the endgame. So uh, I do want to pick up... Let's see, where do I want to go here from here? So she's bringing... Let's do a quick count. She's bringing one debuff and two buffs on a three-turn cooldown. And she already has that turn meter fill built into her kit anyway. So I do want to go ahead and pick up rapid response to get even more turn meter fill. We want to have this champion really fast so she can continue to control and do all the amazing things that she can do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up cycle of magic and I'm going to come down and pick up lasting gifts. Okay. Uh, I'll also pick up cycle of revenge again more turn meter fill depending on where i want to use this champion it could vary of course these options are these are just options i should say at this point go with what makes sense for the team that you have around this champion always decrease the damage this champion receives if she has the debuffs i think i will go with i'll go with exalt and death she'll be taking a little bit of damage because of the uh the ally protect anyway on the three turn cooldown so there we go guys this is a an ultra uber control build on this champion so here are our, our total stats here, 132, 141. Again, you can build her to be a nuker too. Build her to be a nuker. I mean, she can do so many different things here. Uh, 313 is okay for where we're using her. 3000 on the defense, which is what I aim for. And then, you know, 77K is gonna be fine on the HP. Of course, we could scale that as high as we possibly wanted to. For blessings, we do have Brimstone on this champion. Uh, you know, just as much for the smite as for getting she's four star ascended right now i get the accuracy and i get six thousand hp five thousand hp on the two star ascension that's really valuable just for the stats alone but think of all the damage too especially if you use this champion in hydra so there we go and in hydra you know she can play some provokes for you as well a good backup provoker it's not dependable at a 35 percent chance uh given that we have fears and presence on her but okay guys we've done enough talking about this champion god ash i felt like that was so long Thank you. Let's go ahead and try her out first in Doom Tower, guys. I'm very curious. So, 
We have her in Secret Room 10 right now. We have her with Husk, with Skoramis, uh, with Bivald. Let me just see what he has. I want. I know that Husk and Skoramis... Okay, he has crit damage on his gauntlets too. So Bivald of the Thorn, Husk, not Skoramis I don't think, but Husk and Bivald have crit damage, not Skoramis, on their gauntlets, right? So they're built out to be all-out nukers. She is not. She's built to be control. I want to compare the damage here. So let's go ahead and see. And you're going to see her just lock everybody down. It's going to be insane. Okay? So here she goes. That's her A2. I think there's been some confusion. I'm, I'm sorry. That Wait, wait, wait. There she is. There she goes. <laughs> so she landed a bunch of stuns. She did some damage. But really, everybody's, you know, laying all their provokes and their stuns in, right? Oh my god, they're going down fast here. They're going down fast, man. I feel like I should take out maybe a couple of these champions, but I do want to keep them in just to do a damage check on her, right? Because I'll give you, the, I'll tell you the results. Uh, when I did this, when she was in War Master, she the only difference about her was she had War Master instead of the support tree, and she went down on tier five to retribution on the defense tree. Uh, so you know, I say the okay. This is her. Uh, that was her uh, counter attack, obviously, and her. Uh, Ally Protect. I want to see what she's doing on for damage here on the... Uh... And of course, the, the synergy between the Provoke set and the counterattack is beautiful, right? Because she's going to be counterattacking all the time. It's a really cool idea to put her, because of that counterattack especially, should have mentioned that at the top, that's what makes her really just amazing for the uh, for the uh, Provoke set. Uh Okay, come on, man. Come on. Let's slow it. Let's let I mean, let's speed it up, not slow it down. Uh, so when I did this with all the offensive masteries, not just War Master, but of course, that was our tier six option. She scored 780,000 damage here. This is kind of annoying that we're going against Black Knight here, but okay. She scored 780,000, and the second most was like 350,000. That's insane, man. It's insane stuff. There she goes with her A2. Doing some decent damage there. She's going to come back around here. It is kind of messing me up. This Karamis is on the same team with Provoke as well. He's kind of hogging the Provoke a little bit, right? She comes in there again, though. She's landing a Provoke or two every single time she does an AoE with the A1 or the A2. That was a big hit from Bivald. And then she goes in again, lands another Provoke. Not that we needed it, but here we go. Let's check her damage here, guys. Again, I mean, listen. It's a lot closer this time, but she's still... Not with crit damage gauntlets. I want to be very clear here. Not like Bivald is. Not like Husk is. I mean, Husk, what are you doing, man? I don't like going out. I just don't. <laughs> Not like Husk is, right? She's just dealing some big, big damage. This is not, I repeat for the fifth time, this is not a nuker build. Granted, she does have the smite, but still, I mean, that's really, really incredible stuff there uh, compared to somebody who does have War Master in Bivald of the Thorn, who does, you know, he's plus one ascended. Uh, I think he has Brimstone as well, granted a one star. So I just want to say that, man, I was shocked by this damage considering how much control and she's not even in a damage build. Really cool stuff here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and run her. I'm not going to do a whole Hydra clan boss run because I got the little guy actually staring at me here in the office. What's up, Bubba? Want to say hi? So, but I am going to do a quickie just to do a damage check, right? So let's go ahead and go, uh, let's go brutal. I don't want to put her on my main team. I don't want to get her off the main team. We'll fix that team later. I want to put her in this team. I just want to put her in there for Trunda. And I just want to see what she can do in terms of like damage and just observations from all the buff stealing and everything else she can bring to the table here. So let's see what we got. So we get the cleanse in there from Marichka. The interesting kind of trio of nukers on this team, right? We have Eryx. She starts out with the uh, the ally protect and the counter attack. Uh, unfortunately, a counter attack was stripped. But Krisk is cool because he can he can extend the duration of the counter attack as well. Not to mention the ally pr uh, protect, but that he has it as well in his kit. So I guess there's that. Uh, one thing this team is missing certainly is a more reliable cleanser or an Inquisitor Shamil or something like that. But again, it's more of just a damage check on this champion. So what I'm going to do is, is I am going to replace her with Bivald of the Thorn. I'm going to run them each for like 30 turns and we're just going to see what they can do again. I think I should probably take, uh, 
Look at those counterattacks already, guys. I mean, there's no buffs to remove right now, but it's really cool stuff, right? So I'm going to go 30 turns, then I'm going to replace her for Bybald. Again, I'm not trying to compare because Bybald brings a lot of stuff as, as, as well, right? He brings uh, Leech, he brings Provoke, he's a great Provoker on his A1. So don't take this in any way, me comparing him to, to, to or her to him as any sort of a shot. I love that champion, right? I'm just saying that for me, he's like a really good damage dealer. So I think it's a it's a, an appropriate comparison. Uh, and she has a different skill set too, you know? She's not healing, she's not shielding, but she is bringing the, uh, all that buff steal as well as the buff removal, as well as, uh, of course, uh, all the control and waves and stuff like that that we just saw. So I'll be right back, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do. All right, guys, here we go. 30 turns in. Let's go ahead and end the battle right now and see what we can do here. So around 8 million total damage. We just dipped over 31 turns. Uh, Eric's puts out 1.25 million damage. 1.25 million. Not bad for an ally protector and, uh, you know, everything that she's got on her in terms of no, uh, well, you guys already know, no War Master, etc. So 1.25, I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. 31 turns, end the battle. 1.25, was that what it was? We have 582 from a man, Bivald of the Thorn. Again, the damage is fairly uh, similar across the board otherwise. So again, very, very anecdotal. Hard to say a sample size there. But what I kind of want to do, guys, before I let you go, is I want to run one more experiment. I won't make you stay with me, but I'm going to run that same dungeon in Hydra 30 turns again on Brutal. Same team. But I'm going to switch out War Master on her just to see what the damage differential is. I'll be right back. All right, guys, just to show you, these will be the new Masteries here. So this is all we're switching on this champion, Eryx, is just the War Master. We're still going to run her in the same exact uh, crit damage or crit rate rather than crit damage on the Gauntlets. Uh, I'll be right back. Let's go ahead and run her and just see what the difference is. All right, guys, here we go. 30 turns. Nishak actually just died at turn... Uh, 29 so that shouldn't really impact things let's go ahead and end the battle and see with the war master so with war master she puts out 1.25 to 2.4 million dude what a beast what a beast of a champion man and again like i just want to be very clear for you guys i'm not trying to sit here and say that this is uh these quick 30 round runs in, in hydra is going to be you know uh is set in stone in terms of the numbers because of course there is some rng involved in smite and things like that uh but i do feel like the numbers speak for themselves i mean this is really incredible after switching just to war master imagine, imagine putting her in crit damage gauntlets as well uh and i would say i mean it's impossible to say but obviously some of this damage did come from the smite as well so keep that in mind uh results may vary let me go ahead and regroup this send her over to that same dungeon and i'll be right back all right guys here we go here we go here we go we have Eric 600k, so not that massive of a difference that time. However, I will say that I have Bivald with crit damage in Relentless, and he did take a few extra turns, a lot of Relentless procs that he had. But again, apples and oranges, they're both amazing champions, but I am a huge fan of of Eric's. Can you guys tell what a beast of a champion, guys? I'm glad that you guys let me know in the comments to invest and check out this champion because I have to say I'm impressed. Uh, if you're looking for a wave clearer, if you're looking for a control champion, go ahead and or damage dealer as well, who's easy to keep alive, go ahead and consider this build or this champion, guys. Thanks so much for watching until the end. And as always, take care, guys.